Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin Kay, and I am a product designer based out of the United States. If you've been following my channel, you may have seen the video that I posted last week, which is how to create a UX design portfolio. So this is a video that is particularly for new designers, junior designers who are creating their first portfolio websites. And in that video, I show you all how you can build your first portfolio website using Squarespace. This week I was like, what should I film? And I decided that I was going to take advantage of my free trial down here. I have a two week free trial on Squarespace with this website that I started last week. And I thought that it would be a really great video to have you guys follow along as I build out a case study using the Squarespace platform. Some background context on the case study that I'll be building out. My friend is a UX designer. He works for a startup in California. And within the last couple of years, he did Dribbble's UX UI course and they had him build out a dog walking app, but I've been helping him and mentoring him a bit. And I took a look at his dribble page where he had built out his case study. And I asked him if I could use this case study. Let me pull this up on dribble. I asked him if I could use this and build it out on this pretend portfolio website that I'm creating because I felt like it was just like a very good beginner case study. And you guys probably have very similar pieces of the puzzle, right? If you are coming out of a boot camp or you did a course like Dribble, you likely have a lot of these building blocks. And I thought that it would be a great idea if we could put them all together, together and add them to our website. It's obviously super helpful that he already had a case study built out on Dribble because I want to like give you guys the most from scratch experience as to how I would go about building a junior designer portfolio case study on my website. If I was doing this all over again as a junior designer, I wanted to go ahead and pull up this template of mine on Figma. You can find it in the community file and I'll link it. And it just helps me make sure that I'm not like missing sections. And it's really easy to just like go through and make sure that I have all of the building blocks that I need. What I'm doing is I'm taking the information off of the dribble case study and plugging it into my template. He also shared his Figma file with me that has all of the assets for the app when he was building it. I also can access that and drop in images where they may be needed because when I was looking at the dribble case study, I realized that I might be missing some like mock-ups and things like that that could come in handy for a more robust case study. That's what I've done here is I took the UX case study template, duplicated it, and started plugging in the different sections from his dribble case study. This is a really good example of using a template and adjusting it for my needs. For instance, here on the template, it says, problem statement and I adjusted it to be a bit more conversational. Instead of doing a very cut and dry generic case study, you can always add your own little flair to it because remember the biggest thing with case studies is that your storytelling, if taking a more casual tone or changing out a section makes more sense for that particular story, do not hesitate to do that. In fact, lean into it because it's gonna benefit you in the long run and make your case study all the more authentic. I'm going to go ahead and take this information and go and plug it into my Squarespace case study. I'll start with the header. Now remember when we come onto our Squarespace website, we press the website section to access all of the pages. I'm going to go down to case study one. I'm going to press edit project name. And I want to shrink this up just so that it's a bit more accurate. Instead of doing the year, I'm just going to do like a subheader. Move this down underneath. I want it right underneath the header and then I'm checking the spacing. I'm going to grab both of them and do like two column boxes above, two columns. So you see that I have two column boxes above the header text, two column boxes below the header text. And I'm kind of making the names of what those are up. I just call them column boxes because they're boxes in the column. All right. This is an image, it says it's an image section, and I'm going to see if I can edit this, even though it's like blank, I'm gonna add my high fidelity mock-up image here. When we look at the template, final product image. I really like to put a final product image at the beginning of the case study because you're giving the reader a teaser of what you created so that they're more excited to go read the case study and see how you got there. Let's go into our assets, and I'm going to take a handful of the final product images. I'll choose a few that tell the story well. So like tracking, the homepage, a user profile, services, and let's do location. I'm just gonna add a new page, put mockups. 
And what I want to do here is create a header image. One of the things I used to do is I would try to do like a gallery of the different images, but oftentimes it will cut your mobile phone images off awkwardly because the mobile phones are not a traditional image size. This is what I do is to take. So first off, I'm going to auto lay out those just so I can rearrange them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm just picturing how I want these to show up. Really what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of showcasing some of the more visually appealing pages. So I'm just lining them up kind of like that wave pattern. And I'm going to gather them into a frame, frame selection, and then I'm going to export them. They have a transparent background on their frame. I'm going to export it all as one PNG. I'm going to do it at a 2x. That tends to have sharper pixels. I should have named that, but I think I'll be able to find it easy enough. Sometimes it takes a little while to upload. I'm already thinking I might need to make this a little taller, this section. Okay, so it's cutting off there. Let's see if we can open it. When I pull it up, it eats up on my header. So let's pull it down. So what I don't like about this is obviously it's cutting off my side images here. I'm probably gonna have to rebuild this part. Okay, I have this section. I'm gonna add a section. I'm just gonna do an image. Okay, so I'm going to add a section here this image section, edit section. Okay, so editing the section, we need to edit the image, not edit the section. I'm gonna upload that same file into here and hopefully it will fit better because this is an image with a border. All right, good. This is loading a lot nicer. You can see my images are pretty crisp and clear, so I like it. I'm gonna do, I do tend to like to give context to my images, but I do think this speaks for itself because it's that first header image. So I'm just going to turn the caption off. Moving forward, we have our header, subheader, and then a deleting this nice image. And edit this section, make the section height small because I don't need quite that much spacing. And similar to my last video, I'm working for a nice cadence, so a good speed here so that I'm not making this a super long video. So if spacing's a little bit off, I would go back afterwards, go over it, be really thorough about my spacing. But for now, it's more like I'm going with visually what looks okay instead of checking my spacing more thoroughly, reading the column boxes, that kind of thing. But that looks nice. And then you can always preview as well, which I'll show you guys here in a second, um, just to make sure everything looks good to the eyes. Go back to my template and now we're going to get into copying and pasting that text. So instead of problem statement, we're saying a little bit about, there's a spacer box here. I want to make him a little shorter and that allows that text to stretch out. Okay, great. Role scope process and tools. I don't believe that he had that information. So I'm going to add it here but I might not have all of the details. Okay, so I was trying to shrink that box. It's not quite letting me shrink. I'm gonna add a block. See how they're gonna let me add a block here. Okay, so I'm gonna add a block there. Role UX designer. And what I'd like to do is get this text to like shrink. So I think I'm going to add another text box below because now it will fit that header container and I'm going to copy and paste this into there. And then I'm going to delete this one that's stretching. I think also this wouldn't look bad. I'm gonna copy this section and show another option just in case you guys are interested. I'm gonna highlight this text, copy, and then 
make this the more simple information. I like to give options because everybody likes things just a little bit different and I can keep things interesting. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. So you see, there's different ways to organize information. It just depends kind of on what, what works because this is longer. This text is longer. It looks a little nicer, especially if I did have scope here. I mean, um, process here. Wire framing. I'm just going to make up this process, which it's not making it up, but I'm going off of what I've read. Wire framing, prototyping, mockups. Let me see what my next section looks like because that might give me an idea. So my next section I have here to put some more final product images, but because I just put them right here, I think I might hold off on more imagery. It would be ideal to put a little video. I think that could be really nice here. And I'm going to make like a pretend section for that. And because that's going to be like centered in the middle, I'm okay with how this is lined up. I'm going to remove this. Now, sometimes if I am not sure if I want to get rid of something, I'll just move it down and come back to it later. So then it still exists in case I want to use it, but it's like not where my completed work is, if that makes sense. And now I'm also rethinking this section. Maybe I want to do a more kind of similar to what he had on Dribble. A more branded mock-up. Let's see if I have that asset anywhere. No, I don't know that I do right now. Oh, here. Oh yeah, that was the problem. So this image, if I were to upload this into Squarespace, it just wouldn't look quite right. I'll show you why. And I think that I actually already exported it. So say I did want that to be my header image. I'll give you guys a little visual to go along with my work right now, if this will pull up. I'm going to save. Okay, there we go. So sometimes if it's like not loading properly, it could be your internet, obviously, but it also helps to save your work and then it kind of refreshes itself. So I really like this full screen header image idea. Oh, this is a gallery. I don't want a gallery. Let's go back, remove that. So images, I thought I just selected one image. There we go. This looks more accurate. Okay, I'm gonna replace this, upload file. Now this is the problem with that size. I would have to come into Figma and make a better mock-up because what's currently going on is that my squarish image is going to like be too far zoomed in. So what I'd really like is to be able to showcase more of these screens, but the way that it uploaded into Squarespace is a little bit too zoomed in, but I'll leave it like this for now. What I would do is go into Figma, edit it, make it fit more accurately to this image size, like ratio, and then re-upload, but this is good for now. So I'm gonna do header, subheader. I always kind of go back and relook over my work as I'm moving through it. Header image, I'm going to do this above those mock-ups. Okay, cool. A little bit about Coda. I put this like intro, context, setting the scene, um, the scene and the role I played, the way I approached it. These are some final image mock-ups to, again, draw people in, keep them interested. Having a lot of visuals in your case study is a big thumbs up. 
And then the next section we'll move into is the problem. Now, I did mention a video, and what I was saying was a video would go really well here, or even in addition to this section, or if I didn't have maybe like a header and I put my mock-up images up top, a video would fit really well into this intro area. It could even be like if you didn't have all of this written out, you could do a little bit about Coda and then a little video here in this section instead of all of the text. And that could be you talking, introducing the product, or it could be just like a very screen recorded, no audio walkthrough of the product, just to again, intrigue people. So what I have here is a, another text section, but I already know that I'm gonna want it to be more like this. So I'm just gonna reuse this because I've already decided I don't want this layout. I'm going to delete this section. Come into here, the problem, give them that detail. And I want this to stretch, this text to stretch. So I'm gonna remove this block and remove this spacer. And that will allow my, my um, text container to stretch to fill. And then we have our branding. So he did a lot of branding for this project. Could add a divider here, but those are kind of the little details I'll go back and add later after I get all of my primary information plugged in. Okay, so moving, I just touched there, product branding. So we have the problem, product branding, and then image that correlates to research, that correlates to research. So here, obviously it doesn't line up. The template suggestion doesn't line up with the product branding, so I dropped this mood board that he had and i'm going to upload that beneath the product branding section so on the template i moved right into research after problem statement but because he did a lot of branding and like more ui visual mood boarding i wanted to include that because obviously that's a big part of this story i'm going to add a similar image style to what i had up top we're going to use this thinking of how it would look nice because it's kind of a squarish image again. So I'm going to use the one with the bigger side borders. I already know I'm going to want to shrink this section's height. Good. And then I come into here and edit the image. I'm not sure how this image size is going to fit. I'm going to save it and see if it saves the image. There we go. Save is like my magic button. but I obviously don't like how that gets cut off. Let's see if we can open it up at all. No, it's just stretching it. So probably need to go into Figma and change this a little bit because it's an awkward size in Figma anyhow. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot on my full screen desktop view, drop it in here, and I'm just gonna work to make it a little bit more accurate size. I'm just taking this, holding down Shift, and scaling it upwards so that I can see like where the dissimilarities lie. I have a couple options here. I can rearrange all of this so that it spreads to that kind of width, or I can export this in a frame that spreads to that width. And that's what I'm gonna do right now because it's not gonna take me as long. It's up to you guys when you're doing your own to see what looks better. Frame selection have this frame and I want to pull why am I so I'm gonna do an auto layout frame I'm gonna center my image okay so you guys see what I'm doing here I'm gonna do fixed width I'm gonna grab the corners of my frame and I'm gonna line them up this isn't exact like to pixel but it's going to be the same kind of scale okay mood frame and then I'm going to export it with this transparent frame background and you'll see how that's going to look in, in Squarespace. It'll look a lot better. Yeah, of course you can Figma. Okay, 
Let's go ahead and replace this with our new transparent file wide frame. So you all are really getting to see me work through <laughs> kind of the intricacies of getting these images to look proper because it's not always as plug and play as these website builders like to promote. As a photographer, it might work better, but when we have these Figma file images, it can just be a little tricky. I'm going to press save and see if that reloads it and uploads it. Okay. Perfect. What we have here now is this more appropriately fit image. You can see it's not cutting off our image like it was before. And it's because I made that frame kind of the same ratio as the image frame, but I gave it those transparent sides so that it exported as if it would fit, but we just don't see the full frame here. It's just showing what we want to show. Cool. I'm happy with that. Next section, the process. I'm going to duplicate and move it below. And then I'm going to grab all this text and paste it and add my bullet points. Option eight gives me a bullet point. And I'm not going through all of his text here. I'm going to assume that it's all pretty accurate. The process. I think that here he could do like an image of the process. If there was a good way to info, infographic that. I'm just showing you guys a very, very rough draft of what I mean. But I'm not going to add it into our file since I want it to be cleaned up before we add it. But that's what I would recommend is like, whenever you can add a visual that tells the story, add it because it's going to keep people involved in reading your case study. Case studies tend to be text heavy and many times people will just not get super deep in it when they first go onto your site. So if you can grab them with good visuals that tell a story, lean into it. And that's, you know, I do something like that if I could, if that lines up with the process or whatever kind of infographic might be helpful. If you find that you can't get an, like a visual that's very relevant or it just feels too forced, don't do it, but that's an idea. And I'm wondering if I couldn't break this up with some like color blocking because I'm not using an image with it. I'm going to do a different color here. So using color blocking to break up text. And I like to stay away from anything too colorful, but that's personal preference probably, as well as I don't want to distract too much from my visuals. If I throw a bright orange in there, it kind of pulls from my mood board and from the things that I've worked hard to design. So I'm just going to do that for now. And I'm doing that because again, I want to break up these two different text sections that are on top of each other. Again, this is an area that when I was reviewing his Dribble case study and then when I had access to his Figma file, he had all of this really great research. It's competitive analysis, um, Google form survey, user research question and answers. He really did really good user research and he hadn't included it into his case study. And I dropped it in here because I wanted to remind him and nudge him to come back and build this section out more. I find that the user research section is often a section that isn't, it's a part of the story that often can not be told very well. Like when I've done audits of case studies, I feel like user research, maybe it's because there's so much to it and there's multiple participants involved and you're so focused on the design when you're in your bootcamp and stuff that it's something that you I feel like people kind of tend to slack off on. So I'm not going to build this for him, but I am going to let him know that I think this is, this is very good material to tell that story and that we would have to do a little bit of work on the visuals, mock them up a bit better in order to properly visually tell the story as well. 
But what I'm going to do is utilize what he had already included on the dribble case study, which is his pie charts, his uh, data visuals. And that will also give me an opportunity to build out the data visuals within Squarespace. And you guys can follow along and learn how to do that. Now I'm going to have to remember where these live. Charts. All right, I'm going to do some pie charts. I won't do all of them. He had like 10 in his dribble case study. He did all of these and he had just done screenshots. But what I'm going to do is just, I think I'll do this chart and this chart. Do you use a dog walking service? Well, it might be kind of hard for me to read this. Let me see if I... Do you currently use a dog walking service? And that'll be easy. We'll do that one. Okay, so you highlight the chart, press edit, making sure my loom is still recording. Awesome, okay. Pie chart. We're only gonna have two. I think in order to remove one, you just do a value of zero is what I remember. I'm just gonna do like no answer. I'm just gonna yes and no. Okay, so see when I set my value to zero, it removed it because otherwise it's kind of confusing how to get rid of it. Let me see if I were to drag it, if there's a, there is a trash can. Okay, let's move this over here so we can see it better. And we could give this chart a title. I guess I'll give it the title of the question, but it is kind of big font. If I didn't want that big font, I'd go and add a text box for now. I'll just do this. Do you use a dog walking service? I'm not huge on the way that font is. Oh wait, maybe I could put it here. No. I'm not going to get into that nitty gritty. He had 10 responses, 80% and 20%. So 80% say no and 20% say yes. Eight say no, two say yes. And I'd like color as long as it matches. Tea party? No. Okay, I won't bore you guys while I sit here and try to find pretty colors, but that's pretty. I'll go with that. And I'm gonna copy this. I have my information here about my competitive analysis and user research. So I'm going to remove, well, I guess I'll move this for now because I might want it. I never really like delete stuff that's pre-made unless I'm positive, I don't want it. I'm gonna put my pie chart side to side. Make sure that they have the same number of column boxes on each side. Oh, you know what? And I might be removing. Okay, so we'll just move it to a bar chart. What was his bar chart information? How many times a week do you walk your dog? Now, because these are both two lines, I'll leave it. But honestly, I would probably, I'll show you guys since it's a tutorial. I'm gonna remove any chart title or caption here and I'll show you how I'd probably do the text. 10 responses, two, five to seven, seven. Two, five to seven, seven. Two times. Five to seven times seven or more times. Three, one, six. Okay. I'd kind of like it if the colors would be different, like not all the same, but it doesn't look like that's how it's gonna act right now. So we'll sit with that. Add block, a text block. So I didn't like the way that this font's so huge. And so I decided to not utilize the chart text and do my own font box. How many? Hmm. 
And then I'm going to stretch it because I have that real estate to take advantage of. And I think it looks better to have it on one line. I'm going to bring it up right underneath. And see paragraph three. I'll do it like this. I'm gonna go back and edit this chart so that I'm using the same kind of text style. Move him down, copy, bring him over, and paste. Do you need to sign out I can service? Nice, okay, so this isn't the exact data that I would actually use in a case study. He has a lot of good data here, but I wanted to mainly show you how to build the charts into Squarespace here. So that's what I did. I'm going to remove that. And I would, if this was like my actual case study, I would go into all of this research and give a bit more context around it, tell this story better. But we're going to keep moving onwards. Maybe he'll go back and take that info. Okay, so then he has his personas. I think I'm gonna call this like crafting personas. Just a little bit about how he came about creating those personas based off of his research. Add a section, we're gonna add a imagery section. Now, because he has three personas, there's a couple ways you could lay that out. Sometimes I like it when it's kind of like this one, where you can see like images on top of each other. But I think I'm just gonna do like a scroll through and pull the user in to do some interacting if they want. Checking my audio, make sure we're still doing okay. I think I need to export. Okay, he has some really visually attractive personas. Like the way he laid these out is really nice. So I'm going to give them a good amount of real estate because you can actually read about them and get pulled into these visuals. So think about that when you're building out things like your personas. The more interesting the visual, the more clear it is, the more user-friendly it is, the more that you're going to be able to utilize it as a tool to bring the reader back into your case study because we want to keep them in the case study. It's like when you're building a website, you want to keep them in the website. When you're building an app, you want to keep them in the app. And so really think about how you're designing your visuals for your case studies because you can use them to keep people interested. I'm going to press save because if I were to lose all of this, I'd be so sad at this point. Okay, yeah, I like that. I only see two. I'm going to trust that this one will load, but it seems to be a little glitchy right now. Let's see if I exit. This is just what you gotta do sometimes, is pop in and pop out. There we go, so she did save, but I had to exit in order to get it to load. Back to my template. It's kind of like my artboard. User flows. I'll probably end up copying this section for the user flows. I think he only had one user flow. I'm going to go and copy an imagery section. I'm going to copy this one because his user flow is likely going to have an awkward shape to it. So I'm just going to pull it down. Okay. Let's go find that user flow. I know I had it in here. I'm going to remove the stroke and I have this transparent frame. Let's go see what that ratio looks like. If we scale this down, I think it will probably end up looking okay.
place this image. Now we're getting in the groove of things. I could probably do a wider image for this. Let me go ahead and play with that because I see that my user flow is a bit wider than my mood board images. I'm going to go with something with a little bit less border. But I'm not going to do a full sp spread because I am accustomed to Squarespace cutting off the edge of my images. So I always like to leave a little bit of a border unless it's like a header image and I'm okay with it getting cut a bit. Okay, that works for now. I'm gonna make this section shorter. So remember touching, oh, it doesn't work for now. Let me see. Let's go back and see what it looks like if I fit. I'm okay with that for now. I might wanna come back and play with it, but we're gonna go for done is better than perfect right now. And I believe it will let me shrink the rows a bit. No, it won't. Let me shrink this at all. Oh, cool. Okay. Because I had a little space on the sides, it is letting me pull this down and get my box a little smaller, but I don't want to throw it off too much. And then we're going to bring these up. Okay. So just play around a bit sometimes, see what you can do. That looks nice. I could probably color block this to that lighter again. I'm not being super structured with the way I'm color blocking right now. I'm kind of just going visually. I'm going to color block this one. And I might come back and remove this color blocking, but it's a vibe for now. I'm not in love with it. I kind of like this lavender, but I'll leave it for now. user flows, wire framing. I'm wondering like, do you guys want me to do all of this in real time or should I speed this up? I'm probably gonna speed this section up because this video will be very long if I don't speed it up a bit. I could add more wireframes here, but this is enough for now. Another option would be to add a gallery and have them have the user be able to click through the wireframes. I'll show you that for mid fidelity. So I'm putting these inside of one of those kind of more transparent frames because they're really awkwardly shaped. And when I load them into my gallery, I don't want them to be so awkwardly shaped. I'm going to do that for each. We'll just do three for now, just to keep it simple. But you can see how I'm going about it. Selecting all of them, exporting. Here I'll add a section. I'm going to add a gallery section. I guess it's images.
All right, so right here, I'm suggesting that he do a mock-up of Tester's bio because I feel like with this usability testing section, he could really use an image. And I always think it's nice to give the reader a little bit of like an idea of who is taking part in the test because it helps again, pull them in and keep them involved in what they're reading. So I'm gonna make a quick fake one. And I would put just like a little bit of the tester info here. I'll leave it without squares. This is obviously super quick, but info, maybe a quote of his, it's just an idea quote from the test, et cetera, of dog's name. So giving as much context as possible is always really nice. Um, number of walks a week, just giving some background info so that people feel drawn in. It'd be a really nice thing. Gonna pick up Manila. All right, super quick. I do not like the image this big. Oh, I know why. All right, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna see if I can add a nice little image to the side here, but it might be too much work and I might just wanna go grab and copy up top. I like this section because it has the smaller boxes. There might be a faster way to do this, but since this is the way I know how to do it, it's the fastest right now. I just tried the down arrow key, but that does not work. Just so y'all know. Okay, here. All right, so I'm going to replace this info. And here I'm going to add that image. So now it's in a smaller box. Open. And if I was going back over and cleaning this up, I might go and add those little nice to have descriptions. But for right now, I'm gonna keep it clean. Perfect, those also kind of line up really nicely. The color's not great, I would go change it, but I'm not going to right now. This is where he could add, if he had created a mid-fidelity mock-up, 
because in the suitability section, he said that he created a mid fidelity mock up and had them perform and then performed his usability testing using that prototype. That is where I would add a link to it if he still had the prototype. And it, that's where I would add like a video of that mid fidelity prototype, if possible. That's a nice visual to have here but not absolutely necessary. Oh, we're just gonna use this section since I changed that up. I would probably suggest writing a bit more here to just, you're ending your story, you're having your high fidelity, and so I would suggest adding some more there. So he has a prototype for his, for his final product, and I really liked that, and I wanted him to put a video here, so I'm gonna do like a filler, because I just really like the idea of a video here to wrap it up, and that video would be like a, like a screen record walkthrough and he could even talk as he walked through the final product. I'm gonna actually re reuse this and let it be a little bit different since this is like the grand hurrah, not that. Sometimes you have to like leave a little bit so that it doesn't change all of the font. This is going to be the prototype video, but for now I'm just going to leave this box because I don't have a video filmed. So you could also include the link and let them go and explore the prototype on their own, but make sure that the prototype is super built out. But you would want to make sure that the prototype is like thoroughly built out and you're really confident that it wasn't going to break. This is where he talked about building a design system. I just want these to line up nicely so that when I export and upload it, it's not spreading too wide. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a border. Another option here, if you create a design system for your client, you could link to that as long as they were fine with it, or if it was obviously for a bootcamp project or whatever, it would be totally fine. And you can link your, I'm going to use this down here. You can link your Figma file for it if you like have created the design system in its own file with a nice cover and some context, and then they can explore your components and such. Because building a design system is no easy task. And it's always nice to really let them dig in and get to know the way that you work and organize your files as well. So he says, here is a little sneak peek of the coded design system. And because he doesn't have that mocked up in a different file, I'm just gonna upload this screenshot because I feel like it's pretty sufficient. The words, the headers of his sections are pretty bold. So it's fairly easy to understand what you're looking at. I'm gonna to go to fit. So it was on fill and it was cutting off my image. So I went to fit, that's a bit better. Try to shrink my section a little bit. I don't think there's much wiggle room. Yeah, so it's not giving me much here. And I think that's the, oh no, he has a little reflection. Reflecting in next steps. Okay, it doesn't look like he has that here, or maybe I didn't copy it over. 
but I do always like to add a little section like that. For more senior case studies, I'm not sure that this section is necessary, but I always like to have a, a little outro to my case study. Okay, so he did have an ending and he had like a footer image. I'm gonna save that image, save image. Outro image, I'll plug it just straight into here. And I'm gonna put a little like ending image. This is funky how they do this one. It's like a background instead of the image. So let me go grab it. Oh, and it has a dark background. We're gonna have to go change that up. Cause I don't, I have not been using that dark blue. I mean that dark green. Okay, that's cute. Okay, let's press save and preview it. All right, we'll exit. And we're gonna stretch it open. I'll shrink myself. Is there a way to hide that bar? I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna come back. They're doing some kind of an overlay to this image. That's why it's dark. It's looking good. I don't like the color blocking, but it's more so that I don't like the color combination here. But I do like the idea of color blocking these text sections. Spacing is a little off and I could go back in and clean that up, which I would do if this was gonna be published. But overall, I feel like it's looking very good. I'd probably add some more Minfidelity screens here. Maybe I'd have a total of six or five. I would make that nicer. I like that we have the final product like as this different visual as far as how our text is aligned. Normally I wouldn't change up text alignment. If everything's left aligned, I would keep it that way, but I think it's okay at the end here to have that kind of startle effect of like, hey, we changed something. Can you tell what it is? It's because it's the final product. Add that video walkthrough of the final prototype. I forgot my text section here, so let's go check that out. Reflecting in next steps, and then kind of like a bye-bye section. Bring that back in. To edit. I must have lost that somewhere along the way. All right, so I'm going to want to go and add. Because we were saying a little bit here about the UI design system. I remember typing that in and double checking to make sure it didn't get lost like way up. Okay, I don't know where it went. So that's why it's always good to proofread and go back over because inevitably something will probably get lost when you have all of this content you're inputting. And then there is one other thing. I'm going to scroll up to this image. I think that something's going on here that it looks like it's a little darkened. So let's take a look. Okay, we want to background. Okay, so see this overlay opacity? I want to turn that all the way down because I haven't been doing anything moody like that and I just want to keep it clean. Oh, you could make it like move. So they have these other, these fun effects. Maybe I'll do something like this where there's a little movement. I'll do that for fun. Exit. Coda, the dog everything mobile app. I could probably just say the dog everything app. So that's, now you can see the next step in the process as you go over your final product. It's not actually your final product. You're gonna do a little bit more iterating. It's like writing an essay, you're proofreading, you're making those final adjustments at the end and then you send it in. And we've completed our case study. And I feel like this is great. I'm almost tempted to just publish this because it's looking really good. I'm not in love with the color blocking colors. I'd probably go and play with that a little bit more, but overall, I feel really good about this. I hope you followed along and found this video very helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave suggestions in the comment section below 
for other videos that I can make to help you guys break into the world of UX design, navigate the career transition of becoming a UX designer, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.